I know. Well, I did give a little hint on Instagram and um, today's a really special day. Well, every, every day is a really special day, but today is a very, very special <coughs> day um, because we're going over to Italy and um, we're going to talk to Mario Crescini, who's uh, based in Brescia. And um, I just want to, Mara, the, the way today's um, talk, tea time talk is going to be um, divided up is um, Mara has got a lovely little film that sort of introduces him personally. Then he's got a PowerPoint with some images that he's going to talk through um, about the nursery and his philosophy and everything. And then it finishes with a really beautiful film uh, from Bergamo from the year before last. So 2018, I think I'm correct in saying, um, uh, from the international meeting that happens there every September. Um, and some of you I know who've tuned in will have been to that. Some of you are planning to go. Um, it is the most delightful and wonderful and beautiful thing. Um, but so, so you've got a really exciting day. So I hope the technology works. We've had a dry run. Bear with us if we get some glitches, um, but it's really exciting. So just a little introduction to, to Mauro from my perspective. Um, I've known and worked with Mauro for 10 years now, um, since I started going to Bergamo for the, um, what was called Archetipos and now is called the Masters of the Landscape. And Mauro and his family run a nursery in Brescia, which is a, about 45 kilometers or so from, from Bergamo. And um, we got to work, we've, we've been working together for about 10 years and I work with, with um, the Crescini family doing um, workshops and seminars around the main event, which is in September, but we also uh, do uh, teach in Milan as well. And sadly this year, of course, that didn't happen. So I feel like Mara is part of the family, or I feel like I'm part of his family. I wish I was. Um, and um, he's very, very, very dear to me. And I'm very, very happy to see his smiling face, which is wonderful. So um, Mara, um, would you just like to introduce yourself and just start by saying how things are, how things are for you over there at the moment, because it's been really, really hard for you in your area. So if you could just tell us a little bit about that. Yes, uh, the situation at the moment is uh, quite better than in the last weeks. But uh, for sure, our area, uh, the Lombardy, and especially Brescia Bergamo, was the worst area in Italy. But uh, we are really faithful that uh, in the next week, uh, we'll improve day by day our situation. The result at the moment is good, but uh, we have to pay attention to restart. And uh, we hope to do soon, but uh, for the moment we are in lockdown until 3 of May. But uh, the, two weeks ago was really, really bad. The, the atmosphere too, it was uh, so, so terrible. But now we see the light at the end of the tunnel. So mm -hmm. um, we are happy about this. And the opportunity like today that uh, I'm really happy to be here and I want to say thanks to, to you and Noel because it's a brief talk about our passion about plants is so important in this moment and so thank you to, to both of you and to all the present obviously. Well it's, it's, it's our pleasure entirely and I, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to see you and uh, it was it was for me heartbreaking to see pictures coming from Bergamo and then to realize I think that's when it really struck home for me what was happening in the world it all seemed so far away and then we could see it coming and when I could see the streets of Bergamo it was just it was just so heartbreaking and and oh, I'm just so pleased that you and everybody in your family and everyone connected with 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 the uh, meeting are, are okay so shall we shall we start with this lovely little film that you've you've got that sort of introduces you and what what you're yeah, sure. yeah. great okay. Okay. It's okay it's good Yeah. 
Yeah, people have to know soon. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mara. That was lovely. So, Mara, we're going to go on to um, to your to your little presentation, which sort of, you know, really talks about what you do and what the nursery, you know, where the nursery is and and, and what you produce and, and who who you produce for and, and so on. So, shall we start with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I can uh, use the PowerPoint and uh, share and uh, came out uh, step by step. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I shared my my desktop. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Okay, let me see. Okay. So, um, okay. Our nursery is uh, in Brescia, like uh, like we said. So in Lombardia, uh, and if you see from the picture, from this picture. Uh, is a really big area, the area of Brescia, and uh, is a particular area because uh, um, we are in, uh, we have the pre-alps and we go to Pianura Padana, so from flat area to the mountain until about uh, 2,000 meters in just 45 minutes. So we, our nursery is in a, an area that uh, is called uh, Francia Porta, so small France. And there's various, various legend about uh, the name. But uh, the curious thing is that uh, it became in the last 20 years a very important uh, uh, wine area. So we, um, we produce uh, uh, a sparkle white wine, the, probably one of the most important in Italy. <laughs> so if you see from this picture, we have a big mountain uh, close to the lake. So this is uh, the closer lake to, to our area. This is Zeo Lake, where about three years ago, there was an important event with the crystal, the design, uh, these uh, floating piers. It was a wonderful and event. It was wonderful, wasn't it, Mario? Yeah, it's amazing. And uh, bring the attention of the world in this area. Uh, and many people uh, start to know this lake, this island, because inside of this lake, there is the biggest island uh, in Europe, uh, island on the lake. But like I tell to everyone, uh, the, the most important thing here is the wine, sparkle white wine. So I have to see is interesting area for, for Gru because uh, in a few kilometers, in a half an hour, you can uh, to be on the mountain or really in the flat area. So it's a very strong place for, for many plants. You know? So uh, it's, it's really interesting uh, have the possibility to grow here because we have uh, really different condition and we can test uh, so many different condition in, uh, in very short uh, time and space. Mara, so, sorry, Mara, could I just ask you to make the main image uh, full screen as we did in the, uh, in the um, practice? Because okay. at the moment yeah. we're, seeing, we're seeing the two. If you, could, if you could put that to full screen. Let me see. How you say? You see the screen seeing, now? I'm seeing, no, I'm seeing. We're seeing the two of them. If you could, do you remember you went up to the top and you made it, uh, it full screen? If you can't, don't worry. But it's just nicer to see the image larger. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just up a there. second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up there. There we go. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, remember. Okay. We bravo, got it. Bravo. Okay. Grazie. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, uh, our nursery is uh, we grow only perennial plant and grasses. So, we are specialized in this. And uh, we do this uh, from about 40 years old. So, uh, we grow for a landscape architect and for a gardener, not for a retailer. So we follow different works uh, from the north to the south of Italy and uh, a little bit uh, in France, in Switzerland and in the closer place to, to Italy. So we try to grow plants uh, for each condition that we have to um, to work no? from the dark shadow to the dry place. So the main, um, the main things for us is that uh, the plant has to be strong and help the professional person to find a solution to, to make their design. We try to, to give to landscape designer and gardener uh, the good color for their painting, uh, good shape, and um, so to, to make in contact uh, resilient plants and uh, a good uh, effect for, uh, for their design. So we have learned so much in, the, in these years because uh, at the beginning uh, we, we take uh, um, the English model like our model and uh, we understand during the years was not the correct solution because um, mm, the climate is completely different. We have a very hot summer and uh, year by year, we have uh, always uh, longer dry uh, months. So for example, uh, this year uh, is about five months that we have not strong rain. So from November until now, we have almost no rain. And the climate is changing again. So our, uh, our philosophy is, is changing uh, again too. So you see some picture here from, from our nursery. Uh, we grow um, pots for, um, for big works, but uh, uh, we have a part of the nursery where we grow uh, bigger pots for a temporary event and where we use like a showroom area or for division, and especially for grasses, because for grasses is uh, easier to, to maintain. Um, wait, attention. Uh, okay, so just to, to talk and um, not just show the, 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 um, the PowerPoint video. Um, the main things uh, is uh, change uh, what we grow because uh, mm, we start to, to take uh, new varieties from the south of Europe because, uh, mm, for example, here Delphinium lupinus is uh, good just in the mountain, but from where we live to all the pa other parts of Italy, is, uh, they are not a good product. So in the last year, we take example from other grower from the south of Italy and the south of Europe too, like uh, Olivier Filippi or works like James Allen Basson. Um, and we try to, to take uh, uh, a good balancing between Mediterranean and uh, uh, something more similar to the north of Europe because we are just in the middle of these two situations. Um, and this is what, uh, what we try to do. Um, another important thing is uh, um, understand uh, uh, the philosophy about uh, planting. So about 20 years ago, um, the main uh, concept for the use of perennial in Italy was uh, uh, the rock garden or the mixed border. So it was fantastic for us to use uh, Iberis, uh, Dianthus, Alissum. So very dwarf, short plant, very compacted, 
Um, but during the last years, uh, the new perennial movement uh, with uh, Pete Aldolf, with Nigel Dunnett, uh, and many others bring uh, a, a new kind of use of perennial. So what was a very bad uh, 20 years ago today uh, is uh, fantastic. No? So uh, our research in varieties is uh, follow this way. But uh, like I tell, at the same time, the change of uh, climate uh, give us uh, the, we need to, to find other solution too, because uh, 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 a garden like a pit out of garden or uh, like a barbican, we see later some picture about this, uh, uh, is fantastic and maybe we can work in, in, uh, in the north of Italy, in Milan, in Brescia. But when we go from the Tuscany to the south, uh, uh, it will be more complicated. So we have to find a solution or we try to find a solution for every kind of gardening. Uh, in every kind of a condition. Um, the, the challenge that we can follow for me is uh, not to be too integralist and maybe um, find a, a mixer, a mix between uh, different philosophy and see what happened because we are in the line where this could happen and we can see the difference. For example, we can grow without problem, Artemisia, Balotta, Flomis, uh, Timus, Rosmarinos, without any kind of problem with our soil and with our, with our weather. And work with grasses is fantastic because uh, many grasses has a really resilient uh, condition. And find a, a variety for more natural landscape or for more formal landscape. Um, I think, uh, like a grower, there is uh, no just one philosophy to follow. This is my opinion, my personal opinion. But try to give uh, to our customer uh, the perfect, perfect solution for him. So maybe for someone, uh, Mediterranean landscape is perfect for their condition and for their taste. For other, uh, it's better garden more similar to Peter Audolf or to Nigel Dunn. So for someone is too natural, for some other is um, fantastic. When uh, we do the green square in Bergamo with Peter Audolf, someone arrive and say, wow, this is fantastic. This is uh, so poetic. And some others comes and say, oh wow, this is wheat. So we have to follow the correct balance between what the, our customer need and give him the good plans for, for do what he want. Um, there is any question or I, I can follow? I don't tell you any. Sorry, yes. There was some ch children playing outside, so I muted it. Um, yeah, no, I, so far there are no questions. So do you want to go, do you want to look at your uh, influences? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I can share you some, uh, some again, my, my PowerPoint with uh, some pictures. So we can have a, a small, uh, quickly travel around the world to, to see some, um, some interesting place for me that yeah. uh, helped me to inspire every day. Um, like I said, uh, our growing philosophy tried to, to find different solutions for different uh, gardener, landscape designer, and different tastes. So we have maybe more formal design, like this event in Chelsea, or this uh, picture taken uh, from Ham at Maximilian Park is a design of Pete Aldorf. Uh, but this, uh, this picture is uh, quite formal, just all the shape is clear, is not too naturalistic. But uh, our inspiration arrive um, when we travel uh, by ourselves in the mountain, for example, or close to the sea. This is a picture uh, just half an hour from where I live uh, as a, a mountain with 2,000 meters in winter. Um, or disease is close to the sea is uh, 
a picture that give us uh, an idea about what uh, can see what we, we can uh, we can produce for um, for naturalistic no this euphorbia is interesting close to the sea or this picture that I take in Montenegro is uh, is a macro of a small area and remember me uh, Pete Alder project but it's just nature so First inspiration for me is uh, work around the nature. Uh, probably in these last years is um, many person could say this, but I think is uh, the perfect teacher for each one of us when we talk about matrix planting and and other things. Uh, uh, the balancing of color of shapes that we found in nature is really difficult to find in another place. Uh, about our inspiration, we, we will see different plays like uh, Great Dixter. Great Dixter, I think, is inspiration for every one of us. Um, every day is different. Uh, every day gives us the opportunity to, to learn new plants. Probably, uh, like to be honest, is not my garden, but uh, I, I think to be lucky to, to be there for, for work for a stage. And uh, I think it's an amazing place, and we are all lucky to, to be have one Dixter in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and this is another project, Maximilian Park. We see a picture before. It's a pit outdoor project in the north of Germany. And I see a couple of years ago during the summer. And it's a, it's a really interesting project because uh, it's a, like a matrix planting with a big area for each plant and with the repetition of this plant. Um, yeah, I, I, I love these works. I love generally all the works of Pitt because every time we can find uh, something different, not only varieties, but concept, uh, uh, different uh, idea in the same project like Hauser and Wirth that we see in a few minutes. So just this picture, for example, is all green, but uh, with different shape and different color of green. Uh, for me, it's fantastic to see. This is what I said. Hauser and Wirth is, uh, is uh, amazing for me. The cloister garden is so interesting, but this part, uh, change the planting change from the top to the bottom and when I was there last year I was so lucky because it was a really rainy day and rain and sun and rain and every time I say okay I'm finished I take my picture I go inside change the light and came out to take other picture and was incredible incredible uh, works you see this uh, this ability to to make uh, all the plant together yeah, Pete Ohm, obviously. And, um, but uh, just not for talk only about Pitt. Other, other garden, like uh, Jardin Plume in the north uh, of France, was really interesting and give me some idea about, for example, if we see the, the picture uh, on the top on the left, just this use of uh, only one grasses close to this edge. This contrast of shape was uh, really interesting for me to see. Um, I think it's a curious place uh, to visit. Is uh, They have a small uh, retail area where you can buy plants. Um, it's an advice for everyone to, to visit this, uh, this garden. Uh, this is uh, a dead piece on uh, private garden uh, where I have the opportunity to come uh, about uh, the garden masterclass it was an amazing experience about all the day and um, I, I really appreciate uh, his works because uh, is a beautiful planting like many others but uh, it was uh, amazing for me uh, see how many plants I didn't know when I was there. <laughs> and uh, it's not so common for a grower that grow only perennial plants. Uh, uh, 
go in, in a singular garden and see how many plants he doesn't know put all together. <laughs> so I was uh, really impressed about Dan Pearson. Probably it's normal to say, but uh, I was, uh, wow. The same garden from another corner. But uh, all this garden that we are seeing is or private or open to the public. Uh, another uh, challenge, really big challenge, is work in the public space. So for me, it's a really interesting visit, uh, public space with uh, planting that work very well. Here we have the opportunity to see the barbican from different uh, point of view. Uh, two, two days ago, there were um, a webinar with Nigel Dunnett, with an, an amazing webinar. And I love uh, how his work. Uh, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this situation, like uh, I, I like to tell is, uh, if you see the picture in the, in the top on the left, is take from um, uh, an apartment very high. Uh, I was there to take a picture and one person from this, the citizen, they, they live around the, the, the garden, like a volunteer, invite me to see the, pit, the, the garden from the top of his house. Mm -hmm. So this project involved the person. So this is why I'm so interesting about uh, uh, works in the public space because I think uh, is a perfect way to communicate our passion and the possibility to use plant to many others. And uh, I think uh, we can um, make our works when, uh, when a person maybe don't, they are, generally they don't care about plant, but when they are in this place, they feel better. They don't know why. Maybe they don't ask why, but uh, they they feel better. So I'm really interesting about uh, about the public space. So here we can see um, the eye line, but um, at the same time in New York City there there are many different parks. I love Battery Park uh, because. Uh, follow the, the, the philosophy of uh, naturalist landscape. So they rebuild more or less um, a woodland landscape at the end of the bay um, with, uh, with some plants, native plants and some others, but it's a fantastic place. This is um, France. Only one variety, like we see in Jardin Plume. In this situation, they use Calamagros discarfuster, Iris, Stachys. Uh, and the plant is used more like probably architectural things, but I like this project. And uh, now I go faster. The Lurie Garden is an amazing place in, uh, in Chicago. And this is an event in Floriade, in Venlo, about 10 years ago. So um, I think uh, inspiration could arrive from so many different uh, places, from nature to private garden to public space. I'm really attracted from nature and uh, from public space. But uh, obviously, like I tell, uh, every garden give, uh, give us inspiration because uh, like I tell, we are lucky to have uh, one great dixer, but at the same time, we are lucky to have uh, a nursery like uh, Olivier Philippe nursery with his garden and learn a completely different kind of landscape. And I'm really curious about what uh, will happen in the new garden of Noel. So this is really inspirational for me because it's more closer to my climate. So this is more or less on me where I take inspiration and where I think, I think a person could take inspiration. I know Mario, you, you travel a lot. I mean, you, you always make sure that you travel uh, all, every year, but you also spent a lot of time working abroad uh, before you took over the reins at, at Valfreda. So can you just briefly tell us a little bit about the time you spent in America as well? Yeah, 
Uh, I spent my time in America uh, about one year. Uh, in 2007, and 2000, between 2007 and 2008, I work in, uh, in a perennial plant nursery uh, in Connecticut, so between uh, New York and Boston. Mm -hmm. um, was a, a really important nursery in that place uh, of the United States. Mm. They have a completely different nursery than in Europe, I think. Uh, it's so big, uh, and the use of perennial is so strong there, in public space uh, and private too. Um, it was really interesting, like a climate too, because it, it was quite similar to our climate, because uh, now it's changing, but with the really cold uh, winter, minus 20, minus 15, and very hot and dry summer. So yeah. what works well there was good here too, more or less. Um, for a bad season, for the cold season and for the hot season. Um, so that was really important for me because it was the final step for me to, to follow my way to the nursery. Because uh, at that time, I didn't know if I want to work with plant or to be a writer. So now today I, I think to be lucky to be yeah. work with plants. We yeah. have we have a question actually before we go on to the film. Um, uh, this is from Livy. Um, how are the Italians taking to your style and the new perennial planting style? Many perennials and grasses in contrast to what we have seen in very traditional Italian gardens. Uh, it's a very good question uh, because um, I think. Uh, we have to work very hard again to, to, to start to use perennial plant in every way we want. In fact, when, uh, when we were during the last meeting in Bergamo, you, we, we talked with James Sitchmog, uh, uh, with Cassian Smith, they talk about plant with perennial, uh, and you ask about shrub. Yeah. And some Italian asked me, but uh, she, she kidding or she, she was serious? I said, I think she is serious because uh, probably in the north, uh, in the last year, many persons use and talk about new perennial movement. But in Italy, we, we have to learn to use plants. The, how many plants to meter square, uh, what plant is correct. So we have a, 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 a very long way to, to follow before to decide what we want to do, I think. And, um, sorry, I, I, okay, and there's another question. Is it possible to know the plant list Pete Adolf used in Bergamo 2018? Yeah, I can, uh, I can uh, send you, so okay. you have uh, all, the, all the, the planting. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, it was, obviously, it was a planting just for September, for a temporary event, mm -hmm. and uh, for different conditions. So wet plant with dry plant, it was quite easy because it was just uh, to, to make something with drama. Yeah. Not that something that function. But I, I send you a list so you can, uh, you can share with others. And I, I have a question. I'm slightly curious. Why is Dixton not quite your garden? So explain. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's... Uh, is it too ornamental? Too... Um, it's too much for me. <laughs> too dramatic. I, I know what you mean, Maro. I, I know what you mean. I mean, Dix is fantastic, but it's very, um, very, very full on. Um, and you kind of feel that it needs, it needs some sort of more, yeah. more, kind of dis more design discipline, should we say. Ooh, steady on, guys. I'm going to stick up. For, <laughs> I'm going to stick up for Dixter here and just say, remember that Dixter is is on a very small footprint. Uh, uh, you know, it's in, it's it's you know it's still kind of in the footprint that was set out by uh, Christopher Lloyd's father and and Edwin Lutchin. So I think you know that that does make it feel sometimes you've got a lot going on in a small space. But um, you're sailing close to the wind, the pair of you there, I'm afraid. <laughs> I can mute you both at any point. Anyway. You know, I, I, yeah. I, no, no, I think, I think it's fantastic for uh, his work with the students. Uh, uh, you can learn so much about plants because there are so many, but uh, like we tell you, it's not my, 
for, for different uh, yeah, things I'm, in my garden. I'm joking a little bit, but not a lot. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, um, I have another yeah. question. I have another question, which is, how do you select which plants to grow for the nursery? Are you led by designer requests or do you have your own introductions? Um, I, 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 I try, I start from where, where I left. Uh, so there's not a big culture about uh, perennial plant. So we, we try to um, give the, to all the professional uh, plant uh, that they can use in different way. So uh, some grasses like uh, stipa, penicetum, everyone know, but maybe they don't know andropogon or schizacherium or sorgastrum or spodiopogon. And uh, when we talk about naturalistic landscape, I, I love uh, Dalea purpurea. And so I start to grow this year, but I don't know when I will sell. <laughs> uh, I, I can sell if uh, I, 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 um, I explain how they can use it. So Chisa pratensis is a fantastic plant, but, or I can explain to the person how they can use it and they, they will decide. But uh, uh, the difficult uh, for me is this. So this is why born events like Bergamo or masterclass like we do with you, with Noel, I hope with Nigel this year. So the person could be in touch with international speaker, grower, landscape designer, Something is changing because the person um, travel a lot. So this helped me. But um, it's a difficult because it's like I have uh, many possibilities. Uh, don't, don't, um, I don't know how I say. Uh, I, I see 20, 25 different kind of carrots. And at the end I have to decide what I want to grow and what I don't. Yeah, it's um, difficult. It is difficult. Yeah, um, it is have, difficult. Uh, every every go, grower, but uh, we try to to give the, uh, the, the the plant to to the picture to the to the professional. Generally, this is the way, not the opposite. Yeah, we've got a couple of more questions, Maro, and then I think we should look at the wonderful uh, film of the Bergamo yeah. event in two thousand and eighteen. The first question is: um, How do you recommend perennials based on root structure? beyond bloom so i guess you know uh thinking about what's happening underground versus what's happening above ground is that a consideration yeah yeah no um we are working on to the new catalog too generally all our catalog try to give information not just uh, what color or how is i so we are working on to to tell the professional these things too yeah um it's a long step because uh, you say one thing, but you have to add many different small things. Eh? But we try to work on this way for the next catalog that I think will be ready for 2021. Right. And I have, a, this is not so much a question, but a comment that I think I, well, I absolutely agree with. This is from Alice Strada. I think Alice is in Rome. Am I right, Alice? Are you there somewhere? Milan. Yeah. Milan. Um, and she's saying, uh, Mara was doing a remarkable job also with formative events at the Valfreda nursery. So um, yeah, I think perhaps we didn't make that also clear that a lot of uh, you do, you're very, very um, involved with education and for spreading the word, not just to promote yourselves, but to promote the philosoph philosophy of growing perennials. And, um, yeah. and, and I think I also want to say um, that Fergus has said to me in the past that he hasn't met anyone who has quite such a passion for plants as you. Uh, and that's rich coming from the man who, who's bursting with passion. So, um, you know, that's, that's high praise indeed, which I think, which is wonderful. Um, shall, we, shall we now go into the, to the film of the- Okay, I just ask you one thing. Yeah. If I have a seven, six or seven picture from Bergam, if you want, uh, just if someone uh, has never been, or I can share the video, like you prefer. I, I, I think the video is probably pretty good because I think it, it yeah, tells, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. Just a second. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And while you're, while you're just fiddling with those things, I'll just explain that, of course, this year, um, everything is a little bit up in the air about Bergamo and uh, decisions are being made at the moment. So uh, for those of you who've been and are maybe wanting to go this year or 
wanting to go for the first time you know uh, there are they're having to make decisions and it's not clear yet but so you just have to watch this space a little bit but um yeah yeah it's uh we we will see this year what yeah happens. okay we are ready let okay. me see you see the the video the the start with Valfreda. yep yep okay we got it with us no sound That was lovely. That was lovely. Yeah, and I love, I, I love the way that the cockerel in the nursery was um, coming almost perfect timing, actually, with um, some of the images, a little bit of soundtrack in the background. Um, yeah. That definitely gives a flavour of how special the events are at Bergamo. That was not last year, but the year before. Um, and yeah, what... yeah, the year before. We take this because it was uh, mm, more a space for the workshop because there's a, the green square but there's event uh, and like you tell at the beginning this video uh, talk about us so the growing and uh, and the work about uh, um, cultural cultural things yeah yeah and and what we saw towards the end of the video were the workshops that we held outside with um pete uh, and a very a lot of familiar faces there, Austin and um, Giacomo and Tom DeWitt, um, all all helping. And that was a very special workshop, Mara, wasn't it? Uh, you know, yeah. Pete gave everybody a lot of time and attention, and it was it was he loves he loves it when when you have students. He loves to be able to 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 share information. He's very generous in that situation. Yes, we, are, we were very lucky because a person like you tell Austin, Giacomo, Tom, Adam Woodruff uh, was there and said, okay, yeah. I, um, I'm ready, I, I help you. And they go table by table and it was a real uh, special event. So uh, every day was uh, fantastic. Yeah. And this year, I hope uh, we can do, but uh, we are talking, we, we don't know at the moment because yeah. the Bergamo 2 is a difficult situation yeah. there was a very interesting project uh, but we see if we can do this year or next year now we are waiting but I don't know 
Well, let's all, keep our, let's all keep our fingers crossed. Um, so a couple of messages. Leslie says, we will meet again. Um, uh, Leslie Cotton. Thanks, Leslie. I hope we are. Wow, well, Le Leslie and I have got our flights booked anyway, so we're going whatever. So <laughs> um, has, has anybody got any last questions, uh, either to Maro or about the Bergamo um, event or anything that they want to ask before we sign off today? Has everybody seen enough, heard enough? Thank you. Great. Um, Noel, what about you? We'll, uh, we'll send out a newsletter, probably Sunday night, Monday morning, uh, with a list of the people we're going to be talking to over the next few weeks um, and uh, possibly some, some uh, webinar events as, as well. Um, a very rapidly changing situation. We're trying to think of ways to constantly keep you entertained and informed um and uh, well have a good weekend everybody and, yes have a happy, uh, happy, easter, happy easter weekend um yep. i hope hope people have managed to get some chocolate in the house that's very important and maro it's it's been just a joy to see you and to no, hear from you fantastic yes thank you thank you so much oh, thank you to both of you i repeat is a brief in this moment yeah uh, share this passion talk about plant gardening uh, and thanks to everyone, really. And oh, happy thank Easter. You. Okay, happy Easter to you too. And stay well, everybody, and have a wonderful weekend. And we'll be back on Monday with a really, really exciting week next week. And thank you all for joining. It's wonderful to see you. I just love it. It's brilliant. You're all fantastic. Thank you. Bye.